Greetings, explorers of Middle-earth, my Gavanin, and welcome to this episode of Realms Unraveled. Today, we're delving into a fascinating question. What became of Haldir's brave elven warriors after the legendary Battle of Helm's Deep? Strap in as we embark on a journey through Middle-earth's rich lore to uncover the untold tale of the saviors of Rohan. The Battle of Helm's Deep was a true turning point in the history of Middle-earth. In Peter Jackson's movie adaptation, elves and men stood side by side in a manner that was reminiscent of the Last Alliance against the forces of Saruman. Haldir's elves found themselves cast into the maelstrom at the Deeping Wall, this vanguard of the elven kin, resplendent yet sombre in their gleaming armour, bore the brunt of the onslaught. As the Rohirrim manned the upper ramparts, the elves stood their ground below, where the battle's fury was most fierce and unrelenting. Their bowstrings sang a deadly symphony, arrows piercing the night like falling stars, yet the tide of Uruk-hai seemed endless a wave of malice crashing against the stoic resolve of elven bravery. As the battle reached its crescendo, the noble Haldir, with his eyes reflecting the chaos around him, sought to sound the retreat, a clarion call to preserve what remained of his dwindling kin. Yet fate had woven a different path for him. Struck down by the merciless blade of an Urukai, he fell, his life's light extinguished amidst the cacophony of war. In his final moments, the ground around him was a vision of loss, the faces of fallen elves etched with the serene finality of those who had given their all. This poignant scene, steeped in cinematic artistry, suggests a grim reality. The majority of these gallant elves may have succumbed to the relentless tide of the enemy. Their sacrifice paints a picture of heroic despair, as if the hopes of the Rohirrim were being extinguished under the shadow of an encroaching doom. Those elves who fought so selflessly under the starless sky in order to protect the innocent people of Rohan have their legacy etched in the hearts of all who behold their story. These viewers are left to wonder what happened to those few elves who did make their way back to the keep, along with Aragorn, Gimli and Legolas. First, I would like to touch on the fates of those who were cut down by Saruman's fighting Uruk-hai. The elves who fell in battle, including the noble Haldir, embark on a journey beyond the mortal veil. Their spirits, like leaves caught in a stellar wind, are whisked away to the hallowed halls of Mandos. Within these halls, the spirits of fallen elves find themselves in a realm of solemn beauty, a sanctuary bathed in a twilight glow. Here, in the care of Mandos, the doomsmen of the Valor, their spirits are cradled in gentle repose, awaiting the moment of their re-embodiment. The elves, bound to the very essence of Middle-earth, possess the unique grace of returning to physical form, a cycle mirroring the natural ebb and flow of the world around them. So we can rest easy in the knowledge that, for the elves who fell at Helm's Deep, this is not an end, but a brief pause in their immortal journey. Although they would never again lay their eyes upon Middle-earth or the beauty of their woodland realm, they would walk again one day in fair Valinor. Now, back to the Battle of the Hornburg. Amidst the echoes of a battle that raged like a tempest in the night, the few elves that survived would have fallen back to aid in the final desperate defence of the keep until first light broke, whereupon the weary defenders looked to the east, and to the many spears that Gandalf brought to their aid. Those elves who had withstood the onslaught would have been offered provisions, and would have soon prepared to embark on their journey back to the enchanted woods of Lothlorien, for a dire urgency beckoned them homeward with great haste. In this realm of starlight and whispering leaves, they would have returned to their lord, Celeborn and Lady Galadriel. The air, usually filled with the serene songs of the forest, would have carried a somber note as they recounted the sacrifice of Haldir and his company. The news of his fall would have descended upon Lothlorien like a gentle yet grievous autumn breeze, stirring the leaves with a silent sorrow. Galadriel, with her eyes that have beheld the turning of ages, would have received this news with a grace tinged with melancholy. 
Celeborn, his wisdom as deep as the roots of the Malorn trees, would have stood in quiet contemplation. However, their grief for their fallen kin would have to be pushed aside, for Lothlorien was under siege. In March of the year 3019 of the Third Age, thrice did the baleful forces from Dol Guldur assail its borders. The very air would have been thick with the tension of impending assault, the once tranquil woods echoing with the war drums of the enemy. The elves, with their deep-rooted connection to their land, would have found themselves thrust into a fierce struggle to defend their home. Imagine the forest alight with the glow of orc torches, their songs of battle intertwining with the ancient whispers of the trees. The defence of Lothlorien was not merely a battle for territory, but a stand to protect a sacred sanctuary, a bastion of peace and beauty in a world teetering on the brink of darkness. Our elves, fresh from the horrors of Helm's Deep, would have engaged in a desperate and valiant effort to repel the invaders. Their prowess in battle, coupled with the intrinsic power of their enchanted realm, which was enhanced by the power of Galadriel's ring of power, Nenya, would see the elven host victorious. Finally, only three days after the last attack on Lothlorien, our surviving elves are allowed to see the dawn of a new era. That came with the fall of Sauron, the great deceiver. However, there was precious little time for celebration, as even in the wake of Sauron's demise, these elves, battle-weary yet unbroken in spirit, if not wounded or left to defend Lothlorien, would likely have joined Celeborn's offensive forces. The Galadrim would take the fight to the enemy. Envision these elves, their armor now dented and scarred, yet their eyes alight with a fierce determination. They marched, a host as silent as the falling snow, yet as deadly as the winter's chill, towards the fortress of Dol Guldur. Once a seemingly impregnable seat of dark power, the fortress now faced the wrath of Celeborn's battle-hardened elven warriors. And so they clashed beneath the gnarled trees of Mirkwood in a battle that would be sung of for ages to come. The elves, with their great agility and mastery of the sword, turned the tide against the lingering forces of darkness. Meanwhile, King Thranduil led the elves of Mirkwood in an attack from the north in the Battle Under the Trees. The Battle Under the Trees unfolded as a symphony of shadow and light, with the elves weaving through the gnarled trees like wraiths, their blades a blur of silver. The forest echoed with the clash of steel and the screams of the orcs, a haunting melody that resonated through the twisting paths of Mirkwood. These victories were a final decisive blow to the remnants of Sauron's legacy in Mirkwood. The fortress, once shrouded in fear, was cleansed by Galadriel, the dark halls now echoing with the sound of victory. The shadow that had long hung over Mirkwood was finally lifted, and the forest could breathe once more. Celeborn and Thranduil held council within the newly liberated forest and elected to change its name. Erin Lasgalan, they named it, meaning Wood of Green Leaves. In the wake of their storied battles and timeless victories, our elves may have chosen to dwell in Middle-earth for a time. Yet, as the dominion of men ascended, the elves faced an inexorable truth, the dwindling of their time in Middle-earth. Lingering too long in this changing world meant facing a gradual and poignant fade, akin to the last shimmering rays of a sunset disappearing into the evening. Their grace would have slowly ebbed away, like the fading echo of a forgotten song. Confronted with the twilight of their existence, our elves, like many of their kin, would have been drawn to the call of the undying lands, a sanctuary where time flowed like a gentle meandering stream where their spirits could thrive unblemished. And so our elves would embark on their final journey. Their sleek silver vessels set sail under a canopy of stars. Their departure was not a retreat, but a voyage towards a new beginning, a realm where their light would never dim. The undying lands awaited, a place of peace and timeless beauty. As their ships vanished over the horizon, they left behind a great legacy in Middle-earth. 
From their valiant defense of the Hornburg to their part in the fall of Dol Guldur, our elves have truly earned their legacy as defenders of light in an age where darkness sought to engulf the world. Their tale was one of endurance, courage, and the unyielding fight for a world they so dearly loved. As our journey through the enchanted realms of Middle-earth comes to a close, I would like to take this opportunity to light the beacons and call for aid. So, if you have enjoyed today's video, please remember that every like, share and subscribe is a beacon of support that helps me continue to put more time into making more videos like this one. Don't forget to join the discussion by sharing your thoughts and theories in the comments below. I always enjoy hearing your insights and perspectives. Thank you for tuning in to Realms Unraveled. Until next time, may the stars of Elbereth guide your path. Farewell, fellow travellers.